Good day, my name is Jelon Gabi. And today, I will present a topic all about Customs of the Tagalog by Frey Juan de Presencia. Ang video na ito ay aking pepresenta sa aking guro na si Sir Marvin Palaran. O nga pala, bago ako magsimula, nais ko lamang ipakita kung saan ako kumuha ng detalye para sa aking gagawing video. Background of the Order Early in the 16th century, in Presencia, Extremadura, Spain, Free One was born to the illustrious family of Porto Carreros. Don Pedro Porto Carrero, his father, was a Spanish schooner captain who passed away in Naples, Italy in 1574. He is thought to have traveled through Mexico before arriving in the Philippines in 1578. As soon as he arrived, he teamed up with another missionary, Fray Diego de Oropesa, and they both began preaching in the Quezon province towns of Tayabas and Laguna de Bay, where he established several towns. As a well-known advocate for the rights of the indigenous people, he was also known for providing for the needy, sick, and abandoned, and for frequently speaking out in their defense. In 1590, Juan de Placentia passed away in Liliu, Laguna. Historical Background of the Document It was written in the Spanish colonial era in the year 1589. Presencia was eager to respond when he received the Lordship letter, but he delayed doing it in order to fully research the people's request to avoid discussing the conflicting accounts of the Indians. In order to get the simple truth about their government, the way justice is administered, inheritance, slaves, and dairies from the Indians, he recruited old men and those with the most capacity from various districts. Customs of the Tagalogs are a section of longer monographs written by the chronicles of the Spanish expeditions to the early 16th and 17th centuries in the Philippines. Given the order of the customs of the Tagalogs' numerous biases, largely incorrect judgments, and pretensions, the text was not intended for the local consumptions but rather for Western readers. The customs of the Tagalog was purposefully created to give an eroticized account of the Tagalog people obviously supported by politics and propaganda. Next, we have the content and contextual analysis of the important historical information found in the document. Background of the Order The gifted linguist, author, and Franciscan missionary Juan de Placentia. He is a missionary. Philippines who has been tasked with carrying out missionary work in southern Tagalog region. Because of his circumstances, he is credible in writing his account, but we also need to keep in mind that the majority of his observations are, of course, restricted to the residents of the southern Tagalog region. Let's review the information and concentrate on these four points, which is the Tagalog society, organization, political system, economic system, and less the social practices. Tagalog Society Information There was a hierarchy of class in the barangays that made up the Tagalog Society and they were autonomous from one another. Here are some translations of Placentia's quotes. Maraming barangay at hindi sila magkakalayo sa isa't isa. You can also see of the customs and activities that some barangays call for assistance from other barangays if you continue reading. However, there are still some degree of autonomy and independence within and between barangays. Next, we have the political system. We can infer that they had a political system from the fact that they consistently had ships known as Datus who oversaw Edward captains during their wars and who were revered and obeyed. It merely indicates that they understand what a leader in their society is. Another aspect of the political system is that the Datu must conduct any investigations and pass any judgments from his barangay. Ang ibig sabihin lang nito ay noong unang panahon pa lamang ay meron na tayong mga batas na sinusunod. Next, we have the economic system. Another point is the economic practices. According to one, deep Placentia. It simply means that they have been producing their own necessities since that time, primarily their irrigation and agricultural needs, and that they even have a market 
indicating that they were conducting businesses both inside and outside of the barangay. In essence, they follow a well-established economic principle. And lastly, the social practices. They present social practices such as marriage. They also mention divorce if you read further. Be aware that when analyzing a certain perspective, we must keep in mind the differences between the Philippines and European nations. The Tagalogs also have their own religious and supernatural beliefs. Among their many idols, they particularly revered one known as Bathala. The way they made sacrifices was to declare a feast and give the devil what they were eating. They have additional idols as well, including the Ka, Diano Salanta, Lakapati, Tala, Mapulon, and etc. I can confidently assert that the Tagalog people had a developed civilization even before the arrival of the Spaniards. Lastly, we have the contribution and relevance of the document in understanding the grand narrative of Philippine history. Fray Juan de Placencia wrote the customs of the Tagalogs as a primary source. In this story, the way of life of the Filipinos is described before the Philippines was colonized by the Spanish. The majority of the content is still relevant to our country's and society's history despite many critics' claims to the contrary. Our culture, which has been influenced by three colonial periods that they have occurred in our nation, can be seen in this book along with the historical roots. Without historical records, it would have been impossible to identify our original civilization. Documentary Tagalog Customs demonstrated how our ancestors managed without the support of any significant Western governments. Our ancestors governed a group of people known as barangays in accordance with their own unique style. The initial work itself is the result of perceptions and conclusions. As a result, is it likely that Juan de Presencia's work contains bias in how he presents his observations and conclusions? Spanish rule did not completely overthrow pre-conquest society. It is still used as a foundation for the historical analysis of the Tagalog society. Another thing is there are still many 16th century beliefs and customs that is still in use today. It confirms that the Philippines had a government and a set of beliefs and practices before the arrival of the Spanish. From Juan de Placencia's perspective, some of our perceptions, Filipino practices, and beliefs are somewhat different. In conclusion, customs of the Tagalogs, like every other colonial work produced during the Spanish colonial era, was spent with the intention of giving readers an exoticized portrait of the Tagalog people that would appeal to them. This work was undoubtedly influenced by politics and propaganda and created from a Western perspective. This research provided the basis for Spanish laws and policies in the Philippines, which allows the Spanish to not only rule but also reorganize and rebuild the Philippine society. This is Jalan Gabi and thank you for watching this video.